In this video, I'm going to be talking about impulse concepts and calculations. As you can see here, impulse is the change in momentum. So if you want to find the change in anything, you always take the final value minus the initial value. So as you can see here, delta P, which is a change in momentum known as impulse, it is mass times VF minus VI. And the way you get that is if you take the final momentum and you subtract the initial momentum, and then you just factor out that M, then you get M times parentheses VF minus VI. So let's go ahead and start with the concepts. If you take a look on the left over here, um, we have a couple different pictures. And one of the main concepts is taking a look at this formula right here. So there's two ways of solving impulse. There's the first way that I stated right over here. And then the second way is taking a look at the amount of force um, exerted and then multiplying that by the time of impact. So if you take that formula, impulse equals force times time, you rearrange it. Then you get force equals impulse divided by time. So as you can see, force and time are inversely related, as in if the time of impact goes up, the force decreases and vice versa. If the time of impact decreases, the force goes up. Okay, so if you take a look at two of the cases that I'm mentioning over here is say, for example, if you have like a safety net and you're catching someone, their impulse um, isn't going to change because they still have a certain velocity and then they're brought to rest. But if you give them more time to reach zero for their velocity and their momentum, then the force is going to decrease dramatically. Like if a person falls and they hit the ground, they're still going to hit that velocity of zero, but they're going to be stopped extremely quickly by the ground. Therefore, the force of impact is going to be much, much greater. Um, there's a second application of that. If you take a look at the car, the front end of the car over here has something called the crumple zone. And basically what it does is it compresses kind of like a spring or an accordion. And the reason for that is if you have that crumple zone where it impacts and it takes a little bit more time to get crushed in the front and bring the object to rest, which would be the car, then you're going to decrease the forces on the car and keep the passengers safer. If you had a very rigid material where it just struck a wall or another car and there was no give to it, then it would stop it very quickly, have a really short impact time and therefore increase the force. Okay, so that is definitely one of the biggest um, concepts related to impulse. Okay, now the second one was would be something like this over here. We're taking a look at a tennis racket and a tennis ball striking the strings. And it, the thing I'm gonna discuss is how to increase impulse, which is basically just increasing your final velocity. Okay, so if you have a large increase in impulse, it's typically not changing the mass and a lot of times not changing that initial velocity, but your outcome, what is your final velocity? So that's why I said increasing your impulse is a lot of times taking a look at the increase in final velocity. Now, if you take a look at this impact right here, there's a couple ways you can increase that impulse, therefore increase that final velocity. One way would be a little bit more straightforward. If you take a look at this formula, you could increase the force because if you have a larger value multiplied by the impact time, then of course you would have a larger impulse. So obviously if you hit the ball harder, you're gonna have a greater change in momentum, therefore a greater final velocity. The other one that people typically wouldn't recognize as easily is increasing the time of impact. And with striking a tennis ball with tennis strings, you can do that one of two ways. Number one, it has to do with your form and your technique. If you follow through in the direction you're hitting the ball, then that's going to increase the time of impact to be slightly longer and to definitely increase that final velocity. The second way that most people are fairly unaware of 
is you can string your tennis rackets to be more loose. People typically wouldn't think a loose tennis string would cause more velocity, but it does because it has more of a trampoline effect. It let, allows the ball to sit on the strings for longer, and that longer time of impact is going to cause a greater impulse, therefore a greater final velocity. Okay, so those are the two um, big concepts related to impulse. Now let's take a look at our problem over here. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set that up and use both of our formulas in order to solve for our final variable, which is how much force did the ball receive? All right, so I went ahead and set up and solved that impulse problem. Um, first of all, you want to make sure you set up a picture um, anytime you can, even if it's a very basic picture. And the main reason for that would be to notice that the ball goes back the other direction when it gets hit, therefore having a negative in front of the 12 meters per second to show the difference in direction. So I went ahead and labeled all my variables after having my little diagram. And then once you have your diagram and your variables all set up, um, what you can do is you can set up both of these formulas equal to one another because they're both equal to delta P, which is the impulse. So you can set this formula equal to this formula. I went ahead and put all my known variables into my formula and I got negative 4.4 and that's kilogram meters per second for any time of momentum or impulse equals the force times that 0.03 seconds of impact time. I divided both sides by 0.03 and then I got a force of negative 146.67 newtons. And the reason why that force comes out to be negative is because it's directed in the negative direction to hit that ball at negative 12 meters per second. All right, so I hope that was helpful in helping you understand impulse calculations and concepts. So thank you for watching and listening.